So, um, can you tell us something about the language or languages and writing systems that you study? Sure. Uh, one of them is Hebrew, which is it's only a uh, small has only a small number of speakers, but it's very similar to Arabic. There's a lot in common with Arabic, which is many hundreds of millions. Um, Hebrew is spoken by about 10 million people. Uh, it is a Semitic language and it is, has the unique uh, structure of Semitic languages like Arabic. Uh, it has this root and pattern system that get intermeshed to make up words. And the writing system is really quite unique too in that it's a consonantal, basically fundamentally a consonantal writing system, which has optional vowel diacritics. And the vowel diacritics that get dotted all around these consonantal letters uh, are used for the learner in a way that you see in many scripts around the world often we try to make it easier for the learner to decode or to decipher and Hebrew does that also by having these vowel diacritics to make it phonologically transparent we call it and later they're dropped when they're not needed anymore when children get fluent. Okay. How is that? That's very good. Okay, it's too much or too... Uh, can I talk about morphological transparency? <laughs> Well, I think about it like as what, what teachers would want to know. Okay. Like early right. teachers. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> can you tell us a little bit about the context in which children learn to read? Is there anything like in terms of the age or formally or informally at home, in the mother tongue, in a second language, any of this mm. stuff? Hebrew, or what we call pointed Hebrew, that is the fully, the, the Hebrew with the vowel diacritics is almost perfectly regular uh, in its relation between the letters and sounds. So it's actually learned quite quickly, usually in, within the first year. So in Israel, traditionally, until recently, people don't make such a big fuss about getting kids ready to read or starting them earlier like you do in the English-speaking world where in many parts of Australia and Canada and United States, children start learning to read formally at age five. And in some places even earlier. In Israel, it's six. And usually they master the reading in about, uh, by the end of the first year. And is, is there anything about, like, do they learn Arabic or English or other things? that affects oh, the yeah. reading environment so Yeah, much. English is coming to take over. There's some <laughs> some people would like to throw out Hebrew completely and just have English, like mm. my son, okay. my 11-year-old. <laughs> hmm. But uh, most, almost all children, including the Arabic-speaking uh, society, uh, begin very early learning English mm -hmm. as well as Hebrew. It's usually the oral language first, and then afterwards they get exposed to the written language. Mm. It comes later. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting uh, transition because, you know, English is alphabetic. We have all the consonants and the vowels to read and write. And Hebrew is mostly just the consonants mm -hmm. with an occasional vowel. So a lot of children have a lot of problems uh, when they're learning to spell and write English and even read, they don't pay much attention to the vowels and they'll often leave the vowels out of their spelling. So, you know, that's a, something special, different about English and Hebrew. Yeah, oh, interesting. Um, so, I'd like you to say something about the extent to which there are elements of reading and writing in the context of Israel or other places uh, which are not really covered in the standard models. Like when we talk about reading of English, um, 
you've published papers on this. Can you just list for us or explain briefly, like, what are some of the important things that teachers and kids need to know about? That there's phonological, but there are some other things as well. Sure. One of the things that I learned, you see, I grew up and studied in Australia. It's an English-speaking environment and later moved to Israel and began learning a new language with a new writing system. And I learned a lot of things. Um, I eventually wrote about my experiences, but one of the things that really stood out was the emphasis on accuracy in reading in English. Most of the reading tests in Australia and New Zealand, things had changed a bit now. People are understanding that fluency is really important as well. Um, <clears throat> But it was a very, there was a very strong em em emphasis on accuracy, which is a big stumbling block in English because of the difficulties in decoding. Um, the ir irregular uh, letter-sound relationships. In a lot of other writing systems, and Hebrew is one of them, the pointed version, that's not really a big problem. Kids learn to read pretty quickly, and even those who are the poorest readers can read pretty accurately. The problem is more the fluency. And I'm also beginning to understand that maybe uh, in the English-speaking world that, that topic hasn't been emphasized as much. I think that's really important because even amongst adult dyslexics in English, they read pretty accurately, but they're really slow. And that makes it really much less comfortable, much less enjoyable, and a big pain. Because I have exactly the same problem in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I read fine, but I'm very slow. And I'm like a dyslexic in that language. So that's one of the things that uh, is only now being understood and recognized, the importance of fluency. Um, and that's changing too. The other thing that I think is very important is also morphology. Uh, English has a very... I've learned this through my work in Hebrew and Arabic too. Uh, has a very productive morphology. You can take parts of words, meaningful parts of words, and put them together to make words. Um, English works a bit differently. English has a different word for all for uh, concepts that are often related in meaning. Mm -hmm. You'll say, I like to play a game, but there's no connection, morphological connection between game and play. But in Hebrew and Arabic, um, <clears throat> you have a common root, it's called, or stem, base, part of the word, which is entirely a string of consonants and you make the different words that are all related to playing and games and whatever. So it develops its vocabulary in a very different way than English, which is borrowed. It has all these tremendous his sources of words coming from across history, from different parts of the world and has gathered up all these, this tremendous uh, lexicon vocabulary and uh, Hebrew does it really differently mm -hmm. and I think also um, Chinese is another good example where you've got very powerful morphological mechanisms to build up words in a different way you have compounding you take a unit a morph morpheme a unit of meaning a character and put it together with another one to make a new word and uh, these are things that are less prominent in English literature, but I think they've been underemphasized. I think they're really important. And I've come to believe that we've emphasized phonology in English, and that's really important, and I think it's important in every language and every writing system. But we haven't given the same em emphasis to the connect to meaning and the connections between the writing and meaning. And English works has a very strong connection, not just between letters and sounds, but between letters and meanings. And that's something I think that uh, 
that's really important. And, and not only for comprehension, for word reading and learning new words too.